you have come we have found a life everlasting now alive to know your freedom never ending you alone have made a way for us in your love you are life i'm living in the light of my savior dancing in the arms of forever i'm singing like i'm walking on water color you have called us in your life light uncover the world to see now you alone have made a way for us in your love you are life I'm living in the light of my Savior dancing in the arms of the singing like I'm walking on water. You are alive, alive in me. I give my life to follow. Your love is all I want now. You are alive. You are alive, alive in me. Come on, for all the world. For all find your love for all the world to see that you are God forever be lifted high the one who holds the universe in every beating heart across the earth Jesus be lifted high my Savior, dancing in the arms of forever. I'm singing like I'm walking on water. You are life, the life in me. I give my life to follow. Your love is all I want now. Should get the shout of praise this morning. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Well, good morning, Joy Church. How are you guys doing today? Man, it is so good to be together today in the Lord's house. Yeah, this morning I woke up and the first scripture in my mind was Psalms chapter 122 that says, I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Is anybody glad to be together this morning? I know. I just want to remind you of a few simple things. As you can tell, things look a little bit different. Um, so all of our pews are socially distant spaces. So please do your best to stay in your groups um, together. But even socially distant, it's so good to be together in God's house. And for our kids, the next few weeks, our classes look a little bit different. But right now, we have zero to three in the nursery, and it's not too late. Um, if you are zero or three, your parents can take you and check you into class. And for all the other kids, it's great to have you with us for the next few weeks in worship. Hopefully, you enjoy your time with all of us adults and older people. But we're going to enter into uh, a time of worship, continue praising the Lord. So I'd encourage us to lift up our voices, to lift our hands, to worship God with everything that we have. We enter his gates of thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Amen? So Joy Church, here we go. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you. Lift up your praise this morning, hallelujah. The rocks will cry out, the oceans will roar, the mountains will bow to the name of the Lord. He is our God, he will be praised. The 
idols will fall, the strongholds will break, every weapon that forms will shatter and fail. He is our God, He is our faith. Praise is the highway to the throne of God. Praise is the highway to the heart of God. Praise is the highway to a move of God. Revival will come, the church will awake, his anthem will drown all other refrains. He is our song. heart of God. Praise is the highway to a move of God. Come on, lift up your voice. So lift up your head, fling wide the gates, and break down the walls with a shout of praise. Lift up your voice, pour heaven down. Thunder, make his praises loud. Lift up your head, swing wide the gates, break down the walls with a shout of praise. Lift up your voice, pull heaven down. Oh, sing like thunder, make his praises loud. highway to the throne of God. Praise is the highway to the heart of God. Praise is the highway to a move of God. Praises. Praise is the highway to the throne of God. Praise is the highway to the heart of God. Praise is the highway to a move of God. Come on, church, lift up your praises. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord. This is why we live. Praise the Church, let's sing this out and praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Come on.
church let's lift up our hands lifting our hands is a it's an act of worship there's something so powerful when we praise God there's power in your praise there's power in your praise power to break strongholds break darkness There's something about when you praise, things change when we praise. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Praise the place we'd rather be than in your presence, Lord. Sing, I remember. Oh, I remember when all I knew to do was sing your praise. Jesus light, the first love fired me again. I wanna fall in, I wanna fall in, I wanna fall in love with you again. Back to the start where was all about one thing. I wanna fall in love with you again, with you again. And I remember, and I remember when I couldn't wait to tell someone. I was lost within the joy and and gratitude for all you've done. Jesus light, Jesus light, the first love fired me again. I want to fall in, I want to fall in, I want to fall in. To this song where was all about one thing. I wanna fall in love with you again. I wanna fall in. I wanna fall in. I wanna fall in love with you again. Back to this song where. Was all about one thing. I wanna fall in love with you again. With you again. Jesus light. Jesus light. The first love fire. Come and be. I want desire Jesus light the first love fire come and be my one desire come on raise your hands this morning 
Jesus light, the first love fire. Come and be my one desire. Jesus light, the first love fire. Come and be my The Bible says that when the angel came to Mary to announce that she was going to carry Jesus, when the angel came, he spoke to her that Elizabeth, who was barren, was now con conceived a son and was to have a baby and said, with God, uh, anything is possible. And when he came to announce, he came by declaring a miracle that had already taken place to stir faith in Mary, who would say, you're going to bear the son of God. And I've just felt in my spirit the last few weeks so strongly that this is a summer of the miraculous, that this summer God wants to do miracles that we could not even fathom, believe, or imagine, that in our minds and hearts we said they're impossible that the world has said impossible. And I just felt in my spirit today that we're to go after the miraculous right here, right now. First Sunday back in person that you're believing. And sometimes you got to hear it. When Mary was hearing the word of the Lord, it started out with her hearing about the impossible already happening. And some of you this morning, the Lord would come to you and say, faith is stirring in your heart because you're reminded that God has already done the impossible. So grab hold of the seat of faith. Grab hold of the spark of faith. Grab hold and remember that the same God that caused uh, Elizabeth, who was barren, to now bear a son, John, who would prepare the way for Jesus. He is the same God who is bringing forth the impossible in our midst today. And right now, I just believe we're to go after the miraculous. We serve a God who still raises the dead. We serve a God who still causes cancer to turn around and be healed. We serve a God who causes wombs to open up. We serve a God who causes prodigals to come home. I don't know what you're believing for this morning, but if you're believing for a, the miraculous, just lift your hands. And this is not by our might. It's not by our power. But this summer, may we believe that God is going to do the miraculous. Father, we turn our eyes not to man. We turn our eyes not to the media. We turn our eyes not to those to the left or the right, but we look to the God. We thank you, Lord, that you are the God of the impossible. We speak life to dry bones. We speak life to prodigals coming home. We speak life to those that are sick, and we declare in the name of Jesus, rise up, rise up and live, rise up and believe. Come on, church, just begin to cry out to the Lord right now. We thank you, Lord. Depression is going in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your freedom, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just begin to cry out. Jesus, we believe. We believe. Sing that out. And we believe it. And we receive it. 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 And we believe it, and we receive it, we receive every promise, oh, every blessing, oh, we believe it. Oh, God, and we receive it, oh, and we believe it, Jesus.
Jesus, we receive all you're doing, yes. God, we receive your healing in this place. God, we receive fresh faith in this house today. Jesus in our midst. Oh, where two or more are gathered. There I am among them. Where two or more are gathered. There I am in their midst. And I'm here today. Says the Lord, I'm here today. Do you need healing? I'm here. Do you need life? I'm here. Do you need joy? I'm here. Says the Lord, there's an atmosphere of faith whenever the Savior's in the room. Oh, whenever he's in the room. Jesus is here, the healer. Jesus is here, the glory and the lifter of your head. Jesus is here. Our deliverer, our champion, always oh, here. So right now, if you just need faith, if you need healing, whatever you need from the Lord, could you just lift your hands? I just believe, and as Pastor Nat gave that word, you know, Pastor Stephen Kim are leading us in a new series this morning called The Atmosphere of Faith, and that's here. You know, whenever Jesus walked in a room in the Bible times, there was faith. The kind of faith that people would bring a crippled man across the city carrying him and rip a roof open because they knew that when Jesus is in the room, things happen. When Jesus is in the room, sick bodies get healed. When Jesus is in the room, broken hearts get put back together again. When Jesus is in the room, supernatural things begin to happen. I just know, I believe it from God's word. Jesus Christ is in this place this morning. He said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. So right now, Father, whatever anybody needs in this place, I thank you, you are our healer. I thank you, God, you are our deliverer. God, whatever we need, if we need joy, you are the glory and the lifter of our head. So we just receive it this morning, God, all that you're doing. God, I thank you for the miracles that you're working in this place. Even now, we receive that word that came. We receive it in faith. Father, we just pray that the faith level of our church would rise this morning as we enter this new season, this summer, an atmosphere of faith to fill this place. Can you just take five or ten seconds to give the Lord some praise this morning? Jesus, we thank you. Oh, we thank you, God, for who you are. Oh, we just lift up a shout of praise. Thank you, Lord. Oh, oh, we thank you, Lord. Come on, church, just ten seconds. Gonna give the Lord some praise. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for who you are. Let's set up a shout of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, and I know. Amen and amen. Well, no further ado, you can grab your seat. So I want to welcome you once again to Joy Church. What a great day it is to be together. Anybody happy to be together today? As Pastor Steve always says, you guys are looking beautiful and lovely. Uh, you know, the Zoom, the Zoom camera adds about 20 extra pounds, I think. So everybody's looking skinny today. You are having a skinny day no matter what you feel. You look better in person than you did on Zoom or you did on whatever Facebook Live. We couldn't see each other, but you're looking good this morning. Good to be together. If it's your first time here, we're so thankful to have you with us at Joy Church. Maybe you've been watching with us for the last couple months online, or maybe you've been here um, it's your first time, welcome. We'd love to get to know you. We have a Connect Center where we have a gift for you. If it's your first time, we'd love to meet you and greet you. Um, or if it's your thousandth time, who's here and it's not your first time at Joy, we're so happy to see you here as well. We're not just happy to see all the new people. And today, we have something extra special going on. I know I'm especially excited. It is our first picnic of the summer all together at Twin Creeks Park. So we're calling it our Connect Group picnic, but you don't have to be in a Connect Group to come. You know, some people say, I'm not in a group yet. Can I come? Yes, you can. This is open to anybody. We are going to be meeting today right after service at 1 p.m., at Twin Creeks Park. If you don't know where that is, it's in Central Point. That's as much as I know because I don't know where it is either because I'm a millennial and I just rely on Siri to take me everywhere. 
Um, so if you just put it in your phone, Twin Creeks Park, you can get you there. Or if you need help getting directions, just talk to us after service and we'll get you directions there. It's in Central Point. But today at 1 p.m., make sure you bring some lunch with you. We're going to have a bunch of fun games and activities and great things going on together. And the best thing is that we're going to be together in person today at 1 p.m. at Twin Creeks Park. For the next three weeks, um, just a reminder that we are only having our 11 a.m. service. So if you come at 9 a.m., you are going to have a great time with the Lord alone, just you and Him, because nobody else is going to be here. So just a reminder for the next three weeks that we will be here just for our 11 a.m. service. And then on Sunday, July 12th, we will resume um, our normal two services. So for all you early birds, you can come out at 9 a.m. for your service. Um, And I would encourage you to follow along at either Joy churchmedford.com. You could follow us on Facebook or Instagram because we're keeping all of our updates via social media. Um, we have weekly prayer opportunities where you can join the church in prayer both on site Mondays and Wednesdays or on our Facebook um, Tuesdays and Thursdays. But all of our new updates regarding what we're doing and services and activities and things will be on our social media. So don't miss it. Get on there and like it or follow it or whatever you have to do on the social media platforms to stay um, up to date on all that we are doing. Um, we are on our Connect Group break right now. So if you came this morning, so excited to join a Connect Group. I'm not sorry because we've had an amazing semester. How many of you enjoyed your group this last semester? <laughs> Here at Joy Church, we always say that group is life. We believe that group is life. So we are excited to be on a break for the next three or four weeks. But then Sunday, July 12th, we will relaunch with our summer Connect Groups. And I can honestly tell you, summer groups are my favorite. They're the most fun, amazing semester of all of them. We got some fun, special things. So summer groups are launching. If you're interested in launching your own Connect Group, we'll have more information coming at you. But Sunday, July 12th, we'll launch our Connect Groups. And last but not least, it's a lot of information. You doing okay? Take a big, deep breath. Last but not least, we are launching a new series today called Atmosphere of Faith. Say Atmosphere Atmosphere. of Faith. Faith. I am really excited for this series. I've been looking forward to it. And to go along with this series, we're doing something really special at Joy Church. We are doing a 30-day Atmosphere of Faith Bible challenge via the YouVersion Bible app. My phone is somewhere. I don't know where it is. Um, But on the app, if you get it, it's a free Bible app that you can get on our Instagram or on our Facebook. We have a link that we're actually doing this 30-day Bible challenge all together as a church. So if you join it, you're going to get put in a group plan. It's really fun. Um, It'll take you about five minutes a day. It's just a few short scriptures and then a short encouragement that you read about faith. And we really think this is just a great way for us as a community to grow in faith. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. And so we're going to take 30 days in this series to just daily take a few minutes in the morning in Scripture. You'll hear more about that from our pastors this morning. Um, but we would love for all of you to join it. So if you need help, um, some of us staff are going to be here. We'd love to help you um, get on there. But it's really simple. All you got to do is go on our Facebook, go on our Instagram. Um, you might have got, you'll get an email tomorrow if you're in our um, email list. If you're not, we can add you. Just let us know with a link to that plan. If you do it by yourself, that's okay. But we would love to do it together with us. So join that plan. It's going to be an amazing time. I know some of you wave at me. A lot of you are already on there. I saw you. I was like, wow, these, these ones are really good. They found the link of their own without the announcement. And they joined. So tomorrow we launch the Bible challenge. So get on that link and join with us. As our ushers stand up, we're going to get ready to take our offering. I want to read you one of my favorite scriptures. And that is Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 and 25. They're going to put it on the screen for you. It says this. Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. You know, this is kind of what we call the paradox of giving in Jesus. You know, in our culture, in our world, it's all about what you can get, right? It's I want more money, I want more things, I want more status, and it's get, get, get. And we think that our life consists of all the things that we get. But Jesus said it's actually the opposite. He says you try to hang on to what you have, You try to hang on to your life, you're actually going to lose it. But if you freely give your life for my sake, you will find it. And I can tell you in my life, and I think anyone who has done this, that you cannot outgive God. That the more that you give, the more you give your life away, the more that you find it. The more that you give love, the more that you give in obedience your tithes and your offerings to the Lord, the more that he returns to you. You know, Jesus said this. I love it. He said, it is more blessed to give than to than to receive. And this is the paradox. It says our world says it's more blessed to receive, but Jesus says it's more blessed to give. 
And I really think this is so applicable when it comes to money, because the Lord also said that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And I know for me, every single month when I get paid, I get my paycheck, it's an opportunity to say, Lord, my life doesn't consist of, of me receiving or holding on. It's in giving. So it's my joy out of obedience to Scripture to return 10% to the Lord and tithe. It's not even really giving it. It's obedience to the scriptural command. But then above and beyond that, I get to give freely because I know that it's more blessed to give than to receive. I know that if I try to hang on to what I have, I'll lose it. But if I give it freely, I will gain life. So I want to encourage you this morning, church, that it really is more blessed to give than receive. That really, as we give our lives away, we truly find them. So this morning, as you give an obedience to Scripture to give your tithes, and as you give an above and beyond that in offerings, know that there is blessing coming to you, um, and it really is more blessed to give than receive. Amen? So I'm going to pray for you, and our offering looks a little bit different this morning. Um, we're not going to pass the buckets like we usually do. The ushers are going to walk beside you. And so for those of you in the middle of the row, you get a little bit of exercise. you got to stand up and give your offering. But they're going to to pass by, or like always, you can give on Push Pay online. That's how I give. Um, there's an app, and if you need help with that, just let us know. I'm going to pray for you as you give. Father, thank you for every person here. Thank you for the generosity of your people, week in and week out, as we obey your command to return the tithes to your storehouse, and God, as we just give above and beyond that. Lord, thank you that the blessing is found in the giving, that Jesus, you gave your life so that we could live, and we find our lives as we give them back to you. Bless everyone as they give this morning. In the name of Jesus, amen. Be blessed in your giving this morning. We bless all of you that are here, and all of you that, uh, for whatever reason, may be watching the live stream you're apart, we're together, we're loving each other, and uh, we're believing the Lord for great things. Wow, so much to say about getting back together. You know, finally someone else can nag me, not just Kim. Uh-oh. I've been really nice. She really has. I we've had been. We've had a great, a great time and, and, uh, and been really busy the, the, uh, putting on the programming that we have with the, the social distancing rules and the, and the quarantine didn't really make it that easy. A, a lot of other work had to happen to make that work. Anyway, I just want to say thank you for all of you. You joy boys and girls, you've been really strong in your giving. Yeah. Um, you've been really strong in pastoring and caring for one another. Yeah. If you've been isolated and you feel like because you were isolated, you're not loved, you're loved. But you were isolated, yeah. right? How many of you know if you were quarantined and, you know, we had single people uh, that, that literally were alone, and, and that's, that's pretty dreadful, you know? And uh, we're just so glad to be together. We're going to have a picnic after service at Twin Creeks, it's been announced. Woo! We're going to have a picnic, not a nitpick, which is always a positive thing. And uh, looking forward to it. Uh, we're going to just jump right into this whole teaching thing that we're going to talk about, atmosphere of faith. Wow. Hey, Kim, could, could you feel the, this, uh, the joy and this atmosphere of joy and anticipation this morning? Absolutely. Uh, how about an atmosphere of excitement and, and anticipation? I did. I did feel it. How about you guys? Did you feel it? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> this is coming off really corny, isn't it? <laughs> We practice this, but you know. We're going to be talking about an atmosphere of faith in the next couple of weeks. And so to really break into talking about atmosphere of faith, we probably need to define the terms. When you think of atmosphere, what does that mean to you and maybe to Merriam Webster? <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk to Merriam Webster in a minute, but I, yeah. I was thinking about atmosphere. To me, it actually reminded me of, have you ever had maybe somebody come into the room, and this is not to be rude, but they, um, they're kind of unwashed, and there's kind of a musty smell that comes in. I can smell it. How many have good noses in the room? For some of you, this will not apply to you at all. This doesn't apply to Steve because he can't smell anything. But Natalie said youth camp. <clears throat> now, youth camp, yes. <laughs> it creates its own atmosphere. Or we had an elder one time, not to mention any names, but his initials are DM, I believe. And he took a bag of dirty diapers from the nursery and put it in someone's trunk as a prank uh, on a hot summer day and left it. Back of the van. Oh, the back of the van. 
And the people were in their car going, what is that rude odor? And it was creating a, not a very good atmosphere between the husband and wife, I don't think, because they're like, whoa. <clears throat> and they finally discovered it. Um, in our house, atmosphere is created by food. And so I love to take some onions and garlic and basil. And it's my favorite thing when the kids come in and go, mmm, I smell something good. And it creates an atmosphere. And I say that just because atmosphere is kind of like a fragrance. When you actually look at the definition, it says uh, from Merriam-Webster, it's a surrounding influence or environment, or I like this one, a pervading tone or mood a pervading tone or mood in the place. It's that thing you feel. Have you ever walked into a home where maybe it's very, uh, there's been a lot of anger, a lot of rage, and you feel the coldness, you feel the tension. It's weird, you feel an atmosphere. You maybe can't, and maybe you go to some other place. I like to go to Red Robin because it has an atmosphere of like, woo, fun, fries for everyone, and all of those things. I wanna get an air fryer because then I can cook the fries, take them home and cook them. That's just, that's just me, I'm a foodie. But there's a great atmosphere, and I think <clears throat> it's kind of a fragrance. An atmosphere matters, but something we were talking about, atmosphere always has a cause, there's always something that causes it, and there's always an effect from it. And so we're gonna talk about that today. Uh, we're gonna be talking about an atmosphere that I believe really uh, lingers on this house, which is the atmosphere of faith. First uh, John chapter 5, verses 4 through 5 in the ESV says this, For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. Wow. Yeah. In case we're wondering who we're talking to, you. Yeah. How many of you have been born of God? Yeah. And it says everyone, so it's all inclusive. Everyone who's been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world our faith, wow. which is the Greek word pistis. Our faith overcomes the world, and through faith working in us, we overcome the world. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? So, you know, our Christian faith is really planted upon that rock of truth that God gave to Simon Peter in Matthew 16. Jesus was up in a, in a place called uh, uh, Penaeus or Benaeus now in, in, uh, in Israel. It's up on the uh, side of Mount Hermon. It's actually one of the most beautiful locations in Israel. And there were these fountains and there were all of these false symbols of false religion. It was called in the, old, in the Bible time uh, Caesarea Philippi, made after uh, Caesar worship, it's Panias was after Pan. It was a place where there had been Canaanite worship. And in the middle of all this craziness of religious confusion, Jesus wanted to clarify where their trust was. And he said, who do men say that I am? And, and they went through the litany of people that Jesus had been uh, suspected of being. Well, you're, uh, you know, you're Elisha, you're this, you're that. And then he said, but who do you say that I am? And, and Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, mm -hmm. but my father in heaven. And upon this rock, people have thought, was the rock Peter? No, he wasn't the rock. The rock was the rock of truth, the rock of the reality that Jesus is the son of God. That faith in Jesus can save you eternally. That faith in Jesus can make alive your mortal body. That's what healing is. Yeah. is. Is reliance on God's power and willingness to do various things. Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not be able to withstand the power of this truth. Yeah. And so we see, as Kim uh, stated, that atmosphere is created by cause and the effect of that cause. So on this rock of the truth that Jesus is, is the Son of God and he, he is Lord, uh, the cause in this truth that Jesus is the Christ, or the cause is this truth that Jesus is the Christ, and with it the ability to exercise faith in him, which is very interesting um, all across you know, the, the room here and, and people watching on the live stream and those that will watch it even on the archive. There's, you know, hundreds and 
uh, potentially up to thousands of people who you know that 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 Jesus was raised from the dead. You know that you're born of God. And so the cause was the act of Jesus rising from the dead, taking away our sins. That was the cause, and the effect is a victorious atmosphere of faith that overcomes the world. Yeah. Now, digging right into this word pistis almost sounds like a cuss word, but it's not. We're nervous about laughing about anything right now, aren't we? <laughs> There will be no riots breaking out in this house. And you know, I always live just slightly on the edge of naughty. Uh, so, so pistis is an interesting sounding word, but it's that, that, that word which is used for faith. Now, before I get into biblical definition of what faith is, I can tell you that many people think that faith is like like a shotgun for the, the spiritual macho people. Mm. And so, you know, a person that walks in and like, you know, they're uh, maybe an evangelist and they're going to get everybody healed or they're going to get everybody saved. And we go, wow, they've got great faith. Mm. Well, how about that single mom that was abandoned and she's, she's putting her complete reliance and trust in Jesus. Yeah. You know, it's easy to put things on the, on, the, on, the, on the superstars. I can tell you, pastoring all these years, that some of the strongest givers over the years were, were, were single moms. That they, they believed in tithing because they, they needed supernatural touch on their finances. And so it wasn't about being macho. It's about being reliant. Yeah, that's good. And let's get into this. So faith is believe, faith, and faithfulness. The verb is pisteo, the noun pistis, the adjective pistos. I know that you're wondering about these three. In classical Greek, pisteo meant to believe, trust, trust in, put faith in, re rely upon a person or thing. In the passive voice, it meant I am entrusted with a thing. I have it committed to me. Pistis meant trust in others, that is faith. Pistas meant faithful, trusty, true, used of persons one believes or trusts. How many of you know that having faith in one another is so important, yeah. and we really gain, on a human plane, we gain trust and reliance when someone is consistent in their behavior? Right. I know we haven't been together, but let me just tell you that I still want people to be consistent. Yeah. I, I like the term random. You know, this person's so random. They're so random, they, didn't, they don't even know who they are. How many of you know that if you want to have the faith of people in your behavior, keep it calm? Right. Yeah. yeah. And so we see that one of this, this, these terms for faith is that ability to trust someone. Yeah. That's what this, this walk of faith is with God, is interacting with him and finding him faithful. Yeah. He met you when you needed a job. Right. And just mysteriously, you had an opportunity that opened up that you weren't qualified for. And God opened a door that didn't seem to be available to you. Or like in Johnny's case recently, he, he's been invited into a doctoral program. Uh, and, and it was just a miraculous door open. How many find out when you put your reliance in Jesus, these weird things that are yeah. so coincidental, maybe, right. happen for you? But they yeah. tend to happen for people that believe. Right. The people who trust God. And so we see here um, that when these words refer to the faith which a lost sinner was placed in the Lord Jesus in order to be saved, they include the following ideas. The act of considering the Lord Jesus worthy of trust as to his character and motives, the act of placing confidence in his ability to do just what he says he will do, the act of entrusting the salvation of his soul into the hands of the Lord Jesus, the act of committing the work of saving his soul to the care of the Lord. This means a definite taking of oneself, now note this, out of one, one's own keeping and entrusting oneself into the keeping of the Lord Jesus. Wow. That's why I can tell you with a certainty that there's an atmosphere of faith in this house. Yeah. Because many of us have said, hey, we saw what we could do trying to change our life. 
Remember all those times you, you tried to quit drug addiction or alcohol or bitterness? How many of, of you have ever tried to get over something just by gritting your teeth and found out that until you called on the name of the Lord, right. you stayed in the cycle right. yeah. of get better, backslide, right. you know. How many of you are kind of bored with your own performance and are really excited about Jesus's? Yeah, amen. I'm really kind of bored with my own ability to huff and puff and blow the house down. But I'm amazed at the one that could still the wind and the waves. The one that, that whenever I depended, I'll give you one anecdote. Years ago, uh, when we were looking for a building uh, to buy for a church, uh, we were a small congregation, so I was looking at the former fairgrounds before they were torn down. Now where the South uh, Medford, uh, uh, Fred Meyer is, and back in there, that was the old fairgrounds. And so Kim and I were driving, and we'd walk through buildings that were half fallen down and, and uh, having a background in, in remodeling. You know, we're trying to visualize how we could turn something, the bat cave, into something nice. <laughs> and then I began to hear about some of our brothers were getting buildings given to them, one in Boise, one down in Florida. And, and finally, one day I was just driving. I said, Lord, I'm really unqualified to get us a building. Could you help me? Well, here it is. And, and, and that's what happens when you rely. So I, I, I'm going to uh, cover a couple of verses, and I'm going to move on and let Kim talk, because I'm so excited to just be with you. I'm just... I could just talk for like two hours and just, <laughs> some of you want your sausage dog. Anyway, <laughs> Hebrews 11, one through three says, now faith, it's the same word, you know, that we're using. There's not like multiple gradations of faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Now, I, I had a background, as I mentioned, in, in uh, building. My dad had a remodeling company, and so uh, the early part of my life, I spent a lot of time on roofs and framing and doing different things. And I've always found out that if you're going to have a house, you need a frame. And the Bible tells us that, that God created a frame by faith in his declaration by which everything that we see was fabricated. So putting your faith in a vision that God gives you and putting faith in promises that God gives you is not hanging your hat on an empty uh, hat hook. It is putting your, your, your confidence in something that has power and substance behind it. Faith is substance. Yeah. Say, faith is substance. Faith is substance. substance is something. Right. Yeah. If you're going to bake a cake, you might want that substance called flour. Yeah. You might want to have that substance called cocoa. But a lot of people think that all this, this <laughs> spiritual stuff is ooby-jooby and, and it's all ethereal. No, it's not. There's faith. Um, anyway... Um, why don't you take over here, sweetie? That means that I've got to do, that's, the, the code is speed talk. <laughs> we all know that. No, awesome. It's so cool. I, I actually told, Pastor Steve is going to preach by himself next week. His, this is his zone. Uh, he is a man of faith, and everything we have in our life has come through faith. And so when we get talking about this, it's like story after story comes to mind. And the scripture in Hebrews 11 um, says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. And that's why I think it's so beautiful what Pastor Steve said. Sometimes I think we look at our faith and we go, I don't think I have very much. The, Jesus said you only need like the size of a grain of mustard, a mustard seed. And how many have seen a mustard seed? It's like teensy. It's one of the smallest seeds. And yet that's how much faith, faith is so powerful. Why? Because of who we put our faith in. So you only need a little bit, and so much happens. And, you know, I don't know about you, but sometimes I whine, and I start thinking because I start relying on myself, and I quit relying on God. And so we want to give you, um, you know, three 
things that help you build an atmosphere of faith. But before I say that, let me just say this. Um, in the Bible, there's a phrase that's given three times. Uh, it starts, it's, I believe, Habakkuk 2.4 is the first, and then twice in the New Testament. And it's this phrase, the just shall live by faith. I want you to say that with me. The just, the just shall live by faith. Shall live by faith. If you've been justified by Christ, like Steve said, if you have been born of God, then you and I have, the only way we can live is life of faith. And God will test you in this. And sometimes you'll feel like he's pulling the rug out from under you. It's not because he doesn't love you. It's because he does. And he's trying to teach us that life of faith. And so as we look at how we build an atmosphere of faith, we kind of wrestled with this because when I was thinking of it, I was thinking of it individually. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build an atmosphere of faith. But honestly, an atmosphere of faith is best seen in the body of Christ. We encourage one another. Our faith grows. We pray for one another. As I believe one of the, the prophetic word today, where two or three are gathered, Jesus is in the midst. And power comes and God moves. And here's three things that help us build an atmosphere of faith. And it's not in just my life. It's in our lives. The first is digging into God's word. It's through God's word. Faith comes by hearing, Romans 10:17 uh, says, and hearing by the word of God. Let me just say this, you can't, get in, you can't get too much word in you. I can't get too much word in me. And I need the written word of God. That's why we're doing this 30-day challenge. Please join us. Uh, and it's uh, Christine Kane. I think she's a pretty good woman of faith. Uh, the devotion's by her. And as we go through, we're going to read the word of God. And I believe, you know, the prophetic word today said that this is supposed to be a summer of the miraculous. How many need some miracles? Yeah, we're believing. We're believing. I don't know if Dana's here, but we're believing for her full healing. We're believing for uh, the different ones in our church that are facing challenges. We're believing for you. I'm believing for you. I'm believing for me. And that comes in the word, both the written word of God and then reminding ourselves of those words that God has spoken. And the second thing is that it's through, let me just say this, through need and desperation. Did you know that an atmosphere of faith comes because you are in desperate need? We were thinking of the story of David, where he comes out, and here's this huge, giant Goliath. And what does he say? Is there not a cause? Everybody was quaking in their boots, and they were afraid, and they thought it was all lost. And David just said, this guy's a punk. <laughs> this guy's a punk. That's what he said in, in common day language. Why? Because David's trust and reliance was in the right place. It was with God. He wasn't trusting his little slingshot. I think he was smart enough to realize that a slingshot and five stones against a giant, if your trust wasn't in God, were not going to amount to much. It'd be like a kid with a BB gun, okay? But he knew something, that God was with him. And so out of need and desperation, and I want to speak to you today, wherever you're at in your need and desperation, God will meet you. And he wants to meet you, whether you have a mustard seed of faith, to come and move. And what happened is when David actually moved out, what happened? Faith rose in the heart of his people. And that's the third thing, through unity with others. It takes someone sometimes to have a word of faith. We, were, we recount different times, I think Don Tersef's here, that we went through a really hard time in this building and it, it didn't make any sense to keep it. The, everyone told us to sell it. Everyone said you won't make it. And we were in a meeting and very small group of us here and I remember Don was the one this is, I, I don't want to get out. This is our building. This is, and it struck faith in our hearts, a word of faith. And what happened? Pastor Steve went in his office. God spoke and said, next, this time next year, you're going to be sitting here. You're going to see the flowers, the tulips, I think it was, or daffodils. And guess what? That was 1992. So 2002, 2000, that was almost 30 years ago. God answers prayer. But you and I have to be those one that in need and desperation, we say, you know what, my bank account, my faith account, every, what I can do will not match what God has to do. And so we come together and we watch what God does. Listen to this. The cause of Goliath. What's the Goliath in your life? The cause. Remember cause and effect? The cause of your desperate situation, in this case, caused the effect of David moving out in faith. When he conquered Goliath, the atmosphere changed. I've been in desperate times in my life where I prayed and cried out to God. I was in an atmosphere of just death or an atmosphere of loneliness or an atmosphere of impossibility. But you begin to cry out to God. You begin to see, as it's singing and worshiping, it's gathering with people. And all of a sudden, you'll feel that atmosphere shift. And all of a sudden, you know, victory's in the house. 
And I just encourage you, that's what this next series is about, is to stir our faith to see what God will do. And you're going to read about person after person, Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Sarah. The list goes on, all examples to us. And let me just say this, I believe our names, if there was a Hebrews 11 in 2000, uh, what is this, 20, 2020, 2020, is that right? In Medford, Oregon, the names that would be in it, I hope, would be Kim and Van and Lydia and put your name there. Everybody say your name. We're people of faith. And as we join together, powerful things happen. Amen? Amen. Go for it. She got kind of fired up. She might need more quarantine time. <laughs> We have two minutes. So. Okay. <laughs> Is that for the sermon or the, the total? Pardon? The message part, and then you have five minutes. Okay, okay. I'm consulting it. the controller down here. <laughs> we, uh, every service we have people who set, a person that sets in front and gives us time and stuff so we can be prompt and I call them my controllers. I like it. How do you like a little control in your life? I want my bus driver to pay attention to the road. I want the airline pilot to be in control. And so it's nice to have it. Um, wow. Um, I really love what you're saying about David. Uh, think about David. Here's the kid that, you know, he was lightly esteemed. When they were looking to pick a king and they asked Jesse, could you bring, try your sons out? They forgot David. So he was just a good-looking guy that was off playing flutes and killing lions and tigers and bears, oh my. And he's packing the lunch and some supplies for his brothers and for the commander. And he shows up, and it was like Deadville. Mm -hmm. Reverse momentum. Yeah. Guys paralyzed by the ostensible problem. And, and David... He, he wasn't looking at the size of the giant, but at the size of the God who fills Ooh, the heavens and the man. earth. Yeah. See, every giant gets shrunken when you start looking at God. <laughs> yeah. and, and so what happened was, and this is the cool thing about atmosphere of faith, because we're going to walk in it and we're going to spread it. Amen. We've been talking about COVID infection. How about faith infection? To where the devil says let's quarantine people to keep them from the faith infection. Because faith is contagious. Yeah, faith and is contagious. When, when somebody stands up and says, I can walk holy. Well, you mean you don't have to just follow the rule? No, I'm going to walk holy before the Lord. Then others go, me too, I think I'll join. That's right. Doesn't mean you're perfect. It means that that... When, whenever I'm around someone that has greater faith, I don't want to fight them. I want to join them. <laughs> yeah. Yank me up, man. I'll ski behind yeah. your boat, yeah. you know? And, and so in the atmosphere of faith, David was amazing. He, he runs out there. And I mean, can you imagine everybody in Israel, the army was thinking he's dead. And the cat's out there, you know, and... He had, he had a faith in Jesus to deliver him. He also knew that a big dude with poor eyesight, mm -hmm. packing heavy armor, couldn't move like he could. So David came to do a full day's job. Goliath came to, to knock him out immediately. There, there's a reason he had five stones, not just one. Mm -hmm. It only took one. But he had that faith, you're going down, sucker. Yeah. And now, what, watch what happened. Did, did the Bible ever rebuke the guys that were cowering? Uh-uh. Come early, come late. Join the faith train. Yeah, that's good. So when David knocked out Goliath and yanked out the sword and yarded off his head. Woo. Love it. I'm glad I don't have to watch that movie. And then they come pouring from their cowardice, and they got a, they got a good dose of religion. And they had faith. Okay. Conclusion. <laughs> we have three things that, that we can respond to the message. One is make a choice. Yeah. How many of you say, I want to join the faith train. I want to be a part of Amen. that atmosphere of faith. Woo. Just say this with me. Lord, Lord dose, us all dose us all with faith, with faith. 
It can start as a mustard seed. It can start as a mustard seed. But it'll grow. But it'll grow. Secondly is commitment. We're making a commitment. Rather than be the person that always sees the glass half empty, we're going we're gonna to have an atmosphere of trust and reliance on God. Amen. How many of you know we're going to move through this whole event we're going through? Yeah, we're gonna okay. Move. Then courage. And uh, I think of, of Abraham in Romans chapter 4. It talks about that he, he was not weak in faith. Didn't consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old. That's not the time you say, let's start a family. <laughs> and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Takes courage. Dave and Dana, we're in that battle with you guys. We are with you. Our God is stronger than the opposition. How many of you know every battle that you guys walk through, we're with you. We're in prayer. People pray for you. They care for you. And it takes courage to say... You know, I am going to walk by faith. I'm going to do what's right and trust the Lord. I like the three Hebrew children. They said, God is able to deliver us. But if he doesn't, we're still not going to bow down and worship another God. Amen. Amen. So asking yourself, are you feeding on God's word? Uh, What atmosphere do I build when faced with challenges and desperation? How many of you say, Pastor, I think I could work on this a little bit more? Yeah, Yeah, we all can, can't we? And then am I connecting with others to produce an atmosphere of faith where God can move and bring victory? You you guys that are here and you that are joining on live stream, you're doing it. We're doing it. We're saying we need each other. One thing I learned in this quarantine time is I'm not a rock and I'm not an island. I need you. I need you. And you need us. And we need each other. And we need God. The first thing that is really required for someone to fully actualize a relationship with God is to call on the name of the Lord. The payment for sin and the payment to bring a person because week after week people come uh, to service or watch it online and they're pondering spiritual things. They're pondering God. You, you, you may ask, what does it take to have peace with God? What does it take to be a part of his family? Well, number one, you have to know that you must be born again. You must have God generate his life in you as you put your faith in him. Remember that rock of faith that Jesus is the Christ? You've got to be able to say, only Jesus can take away my sins. I can't follow Jesus and Baha'u'llah and Confucianism and Buddhism. How many of you know God is a jealous God? You've got to pick one object of your trust. We trust in Jesus as the full agent and broker of our salvation. The Bible says if you'll call in the name of the Lord, that you'll be saved. Right now, if you could just, every one of you just in the house here, just bow your head and close your eyes. I'd like every one of you that came here and, and realized that you need God. Maybe what's going on in our nation has disturbed you. I think that what's going on in our nation should disturb anyone, but it shouldn't disturb us from calling on God. There's funky stuff going on, which means we need God that much more. I'd like you, if you're here and you say, I want want God, Pastor, just raise your hand so I can see. Our intent, I see hands here. I see another hand back here. See hand back here. See a hand in the back. A number of you. What we're going to do is we're going to invite all of us together are going to invite Jesus into our heart. If you'll pray this prayer and you'll believe that calling on the Lord will save you, because the Bible says that if you call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. And so we believe that as you pray this 
And then there's information that we can get you on how to walk with God. Please join a small group and have some friends help you grow in Jesus. We're here for you. Let's pray this prayer. Could we all do this? Just repeat with me. Dear Father, Dear Father, I need, I need to be born of God. To be born of God. I was born of, of a human uh, ancestry. I was born of human ancestry. But I need to be born spiritually. But I need to be born spiritually. You said, Lord. You said, Lord. That Jesus was sent. Jesus was sent. To take away our sins. To take away our sins. The Bible teaches. The Bible teaches. That he died. That he died. To pay for our sins. To pay for our sins. He rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. As proof of the payment. As proof of the payment. That it was received. That it was received. I believe. I believe. I believe that Jesus can take away my sins. Take away my sin. Take away my sin. Forgive me. Forgive me. Dear God. Dear God. If you'll be my God. If you'll be my God. I'll be your servant. I'll be your servant. If you'll be my father. If you'll be my father. I'll be your child. I'll be your child. Receive me this day. Receive me this day. I pray, dear God. I pray, dear God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's finish with just a, a, a word of prayer, and then uh, I think we probably have some music. Uh, okay, here you go. No, no, that's cool. Yeah. How many of you know we're a little rusty with our service order? Thank we say thank you to Pastor Stephen Kim. What a wonderful message. <laughs> well, just a few quick reminders for you. For all of those that prayed that prayer to surrender your life to Jesus, that is the greatest decision you could ever make. We just give it up for all of them. Um, we have a number that you can text right on the screen. If you just text decision, we want to give you some great resources to begin this journey um, of following Jesus. Or there's a card right in front of you, a yellow one that says, I've decided to follow Jesus. You can fill that out and turn it in at our Connect Center or give it to our prayer team. I'd really urge you to do that. Or just come up and talk to one of these people up here. They would love to meet you as you start this new journey of following Jesus. Don't forget that today, right after service, you have about an hour to go get your food, get changed. We're going to be at Twin Creeks Park. It's going to be an amazing time. Can't wait to see you there um, for our first picnic of the summer. Next week, we'll be here at 11 a.m. Make sure you follow us on Facebook or Instagram so you don't miss anything that's going on here at Joy Church. And last but not least, almost last but not least, we are starting that Atmosphere of Faith Bible Challenge tomorrow. I saw a whole bunch of you already jumped on during service, so um, maybe you shouldn't be on your phone during service. I'm happy that you joined the Bible Challenge during service, so. <laughs> um, but for everybody else, make sure you join that. We start tomorrow if you need help getting that link. It's on our Facebook or Instagram where we will help you. And the truly last but not least is that we have a prayer team right up here. Um, uh, this is an atmosphere of faith. The Lord is here to heal whatever you need in your life. If you need provision, if you need a miracle, we really believe our God is a God who's still working, uh, who is alive today just like he was 2,000 years ago, and he's always been alive working miracles. So don't leave this place without getting prayer. Um, our, our team is ready to pray for you, so come and get prayer for whatever you need in your life. But we love you. Thank you so much for being here today. God bless you, and see you at 1 o'clock at the picnic.